Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be doing my bottom three products from my top three favorite brands. So if you want to see that, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So what inspired this video you might or might not be asking is recently I did a top five products for my top five favorite brands. This video was originally inspired from Michelle Wong who started this series. And a lot of you guys asked me to cover my least favorite products from those top three favorite brands. So I'm going to do that. I did my top five favorite products in that video. I'm narrowing it down to my bottom three for the same three brands. So you can really see which ones I do not like. If you're new to my channel, these are my three favorite brands. I've tried the majority of the products from each of the lines. So I do consider myself to be pretty well versed in these. So um, let's get into it. We're going to go in the same order as last time. So I'm going to start off with Natasha Denona. So the first product that I'm going to talk about is the only product that I do not physically have for today but I did want to mention it because I just remember being so appalled by this product. No. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep in mind that if you love these products, that is totally fine. These are just my own personal opinions. My opinion is not the end all be all. It's fun to do a little bit of gossip here and there, you know? I'm a pretty positive channel, I would say for the most part, but I like to throw in a nice negative video here and there because it's just fun. Anyways, so this Transfix Matte Concealer from Natasha Denona was one of the first times that I dove into the complexion products from Natasha. Denona and I have to admit complexion really isn't Natasha's strong suit here and this concealer was a no go for me. It is so matte and so drying underneath the eyes. I don't normally return makeup but I did return that when it was that bad and I do believe she's either reformulating or taking this off of her product list because it is 50% off on Sephora and I personally would not recommend it even for that price. So so dry, so heavy under the eyes. There was nothing about that concealer that I liked, so that's why it's in my bottom three products from her. The next product is a fairly new product, and there's mixed opinions on this, but I just cannot get into her puff paints. These are liquid blushes. You're also supposed to be able to use these on the lips. They do not work on my lips at the very least, and I will admit this shade right here, the deepest shade, it's not that bad. I actually like like this one. However, this should not work for my skin tone. This should be really, really dark for my skin tone. Great for deep skin tones. The first two shades right here disappear into nothing. I like the consistency of this because it does feel very hydrating. However, every time I put this on, I can't see it. It like disappears into my skin. When I layer it, I can get a little bit of color, but it disappears. Like I don't see too much color on my cheek right now. It's on this cheek. It just disappears. If not right away, then over time. It doesn't last. I don't get the color that I want. And while I do like this color right here, this is so much darker than the others too. That just goes to show you how sheer it is. I do think that there is a market for this, however. You know, if you're very fair or you really aren't into blush, I think you will like these. But I can't quite decide if it removes my foundation or not because I feel like when I put this on I can see my skin underneath it doesn't necessarily break up the foundation but I feel like it removes it because I can see my skin underneath so anyways I've been really disappointed with these products I do not do not like these do not necessarily recommend them and I just think it's not one of her better releases Alrighty, and for my last product from Natasha Denona that I am just not a fan of, these are older products and Natasha's gotten the message that the general consensus on these is that people don't like these. I'm going to count them as one, but these are her first two mini palettes. I think nowadays she's launching much better mini palettes and the quality is really great, but I really think she tried to skimp us with these and reduce the quality on these because they are not up to par with her full size palette formula. So today I'm actually wearing mini Lila. It's been a while since I used this, so I wanted to use it and I really like the colors on here. Like I'm not going to lie. 
by this look, so pretty. However, the road to get to this look took forever. These mattes are awful. They are patchy. They take forever to blend. The shimmers are a little bit disappointing. The shimmers, particularly in the mini sunset, are quite underwhelming. So I'm not saying you can't get a pretty look from these, but if you are looking to pick these up, and she might have discontinued this. I remember these being on a heavy discount, but if you're gonna get her mini palettes, do not get the mini Lila or the mini Sunset because these are the ones where she was testing the waters to see if she could get away with it. She couldn't because soon after these two, most if not all of them have been the same quality as her bigger palettes, but she couldn't get one past me. I knew that these were different. Something was off with these, and like I said, I really love the look of the mini Lila and the colors here but it took me forever to blend out these purple shades and even then I'm looking and I'm a little bit dissatisfied with my blend. This one because they're neutrals it's a little bit easier to work with but nonetheless you can just tell these shimmers they aren't there. They aren't the Natasha Denona formula. You aren't getting what you're paying for. So that is why these are the least favorite. They were just so disappointing to me. Like it's kind of a letdown from the brand, you know, because it just doesn't feel right. It feels a little bit icky that they were trying to release these not in the same formula. So I'm happy that she did change that, but yeah, don't recommend these. But the other one's completely fine, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, we are gonna move on to Pat McGrath, arguably my favorite brand. And I have to say, looking through their product lists and seeing what I have. Pat McGrath was a tough one. For the most part, even if I don't love the products, she comes out with really solid products. Really nothing from the brand is bad, which is very surprising, but I had to pick my least three favorite products that I've tried and I just want to get the lips out of the way because I know my lips. They look super crusty and dry and they feel so uncomfortable. So the first product that I need to talk about and address the situation that's on my face are the liquid lipsticks from Pat McGrath. So dry. It's a very thin formula, which normally I really enjoy thinner liquid lipstick formulas, but even though she got it so thin, which it got all over my teeth, by the way, because it is so thin, it, they still emphasize the texture on the lips. You can see every single line on the lips, and I'm 25. Like, a lip product should not make my lips look like this and they don't feel very comfortable to me. I just, I don't like them. I really like the colors. I have Divine Rose and Divine Nude, which is what I'm wearing, but it's so uncomfortable for me and it looks terrible. They just seep into lines. Mm -mm, not a good liquid lipstick in my opinion. This is probably my least favorite product that she's ever come out with, which is a shame because she actually had a different liquid lipstick formula during the very beginning of her brand that I really liked. These are not good. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am gonna talk about another lip product and you guys are gonna fight me tooth and nail about this because I know so many of you love this product, but to me, it is not worth it. It is her fetish lip balms. I actually don't have one. I had to search in my mom's collection. <laughs> These are $39 and the only expensive lip balm that I will pay for are the Laneige ones. Those really work and I'm not saying that this lip balm doesn't work. I'm just saying it's pretty generic to me and it's not worth the $39. I feel like I'm paying for the packaging. The lip balm itself, it's decent, but it doesn't stand out to me more than any other lip moisturizer that I have. So I went to my mom's collection because I knew she had it and I think my mom really likes it. <laughs> so hers is all emptied right here. This is from the Star Wars collection. She probably is just keeping it for the packaging because I mean, come on. But no, I, I can't. I don't see the hype for $39. It's just not worth it to me. And the last product that I have from Pat McGrath, this is a product that I feel like I drag my feet to use. I just don't ever want to use it. The experience, for some reason, it's not pleasant to me. And this is sold out on her website, but it is still currently on her website. It's from a holiday collection. This is one of her first tries at a single highlighter. She has her trio, which I also am not in love with, but she had that out and she had her cream highlight. So this was her first like single powder highlight and it comes in super expensive heavy packaging. It was very odd. This product was made in Taiwan and most of her products are made in Italy. Not that that means too much, but it was really expensive. But the packaging is super luxe, but this highlight to me 
it's good, but it's not great. Oh, we paid a price where the product should be great. It's this weird putty formula, and it just, I feel like at times it can look chunky on the skin if it's not paired with the right foundation. It's just not worth the price. I was not moved by this highlight. I never really have been that into it. She has since redeemed herself and she's come out with a couple really nice smoothing highlights that apply so easily on the skin. This one doesn't glide on the skin. It emphasizes texture in an unflattering way. Just to me, this was not it. I was very shocked when she came out with a formulation like this because I feel like at this point, the technology for highlight formulations, it's much more advanced than it was back in the day. A lot of brands have a lot of great highlight formulas and this one was a big step back. I definitely expected better from her because like I said pretty much everything she comes out with is really really good This was not for me. I did not like this <sighs> Let me put on some gloss y'all. I am like Struggling I'm gonna use some Fenty mob wipes. These go really good together and I have a zit right here So that's what that bump is. All right, we're gonna move on to the last and final brand Which is Charlotte Tilbury now Charlotte Tilbury. I will admit I said if I could only use one brand for the rest of my life It definitely would be Charlotte Tilbury, but she comes out with so many products like there definitely are duds in the line So we're first gonna talk about something that I actually just recently talked about in my life <laughs> I do not like her magic away liquid concealer. It's another one of those concealers where I I feel like the product just swims in the fine line under my eyes and it ages me. It's a drying concealer and it just doesn't stay put. It just, you can see the dryness under the eyes right here. And not only does it sink into those fine lines, but it makes them look super dry and really enhanced. Very, very unflattering. So this is almost gone. I've used so much of it just because every time I do a Charlotte Tilbury video, which is quite frequent, honestly, I use this just because and I'm trying to use it up and I'm, I'm almost there, you guys. I used it today. I look a little bit more wrinkly <laughs> than I normally would because of this concealer. I've heard a lot of people who like this. I just, I can't get into it. It just doesn't work for me no matter what I use with it, no matter what I use to set with it. Even if I don't set it, it's, ugh. Hmm. Hmm, okay. <laughs> the next product that I have is one that she recently relaunched. I don't know if she reformulated it in the relaunch, but I don't know why she relaunched it because I didn't like it. <laughs> So this is kind of a warning to those of you who wanted to get this when you saw that it was relaunched. This is the Pillow Talk Lip and Cheek Glow. And it's like a lip gloss basically in this little compact, but it's supposed to be for the cheeks and the lips. First of all, I did a demo on the lips. It does not look good on the lips. It doesn't do anything for the lips. It doesn't even feel hydrating on the lips. It felt drying when I put it on. So whatever, but also as a cheek color, it's so sticky and it feels like a gloss on the cheek. Since I've been wearing it, it has dried down, don't get me wrong, but I feel like the color also disappears. It's much more pigmented than the Natasha Denona ones, don't get me wrong, like you only need one application and it looks good. But then your cheek is sticky, your hair sticks to your cheek, and then over time I noticed just as I put other products over top like my setting powder all of that the color has disappeared and depending on what you have underneath this does break up my foundation and makes my makeup look really messy and not good so i don't know if she's reformulated it because this is from the original launch but i was not feeling this product still not feeling it pulled it out today i haven't used it in a while and i'm like I think I liked it more than when I first tried it because today for some reason it didn't break up my foundation but I still don't like it. Okay, the very last product from Charlotte Tilbury. I have a couple different quads. We're counting them as one but there's two specifically that I would not recommend. So the first one is a style of quads that she does and it is her palette of pops. If you see palette of pops, I mean some people like this formula. Personally, I would advise you to go in the other direction and pick a different formulation, but these are all basically her lid toppers in one quad. She's 
reformulated, I think, because it seems in the newer quads that they aren't as bad. But these get super hard panned. They still work with the hard pan, but you know, the aesthetics, it bothers me. These also don't stay on the eyelid. They just get all over the face. I just, I don't see a point in these. They also kind of look the same on the lid because they're lid toppers. So there's no need to pay 50 something dollars for four glittery shades that look the same and you have to put other eyeshadows on your eyes anyways. I don't see the value. The formulation isn't there in my opinion. I don't mind when a quad has one pop shade because it does add something to a look. You add your crease colors, lid colors, whatever. You take one of the pop shades. It does add that extra sparkle. It's nice. But is it worth it to get four of them in one quad? No. Don't recommend it. <laughs> the other one is a specific color. It's really disappointing because I really do like her quads, but I do notice that there are inconsistencies in the quads, and this is probably the worst one that I've tried. This is the Vintage Vamp. I find this one to look very, very patchy, and the quality is just not there. The pigmentation just isn't there. These shades do not look like what they do on the eyelid. They're sheer, but they're still very patchy. I just don't like this one. Every time I wear it, I feel like my eyeshadow looks really unblended and like I don't know what I'm doing so there's something about this quad that's just not good so if you are looking at Charlotte Tilbury quads stay away from any palette of pops and from the vintage vamp and there we have it those are my least favorite products from my most favorite brands I hope you guys enjoyed this and found this helpful like I said if you like these products it's okay everybody's entitled to their own opinion I just had a lot of requests for this one and I thought it sounded fun and I did have fun that's all I have for today's video i hope you guys enjoyed it if you aren't subscribed to my channel already i would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and i will see you all in the next one bye guys have a good one